Okay. The tetragrammaton combination for the month of Nisan is Yod Hey Bavre. So when you pray, you should have, you should meditate on that name. You should be looking at Yod Hey Bavre in your head. When you pray, you should just med just sit quietly and meditate on the. Uh, the Shin Pimi Forest or the Tetragram. All through the month of Nisan, Yohei Vafi. Now, the scripture that that's taken from, you should also notice. Now, this I believe is going to be found in, in my teachings of the month from last year. So I'm not going to go real deep into it, just refer you to that, that teaching that I've already covered, <coughs> but I will say it here, uh, just in case, okay, page 128, ready, Exodus 12.2. Okay. It's taken from Exodus 12.2. I believe it's... Did I get that right? Let's see. The first and most obvious observation you can make regarding Yehuda is that his name eventually became synonymous with the Jewish nation. We all refer to as Yehudim. Um, okay. Okay. This is some some other some other teaching. Um, Hiding from me right now. I know I'm looking right at it. What do you like to say? Uh, the um, the actual scripture that the name is is taken from. Okay, I'll find out. I mean, it's it's already listed. I'm I'm sure I already have it listing listed on my teachings for a month. But the main thing you need to know. Is that the tetragrammaton combination is Yod Hey Vav? Now there are also other letters that you should meditate on for this month as well. This is the month of Aries. The Hebrew letter that created. The constellation Aries is the letter He. And the Hebrew letter that created the planet that controls this month is Dalit. And the planet is Mars. Now, each letter describes the characteristic of the month or the influence of that month. Each month is associated with one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So if you want to know the influence that this month is under, study that particular tribe. What is the characteristics of that tribe in the Bible? What did that particular uh, son of Jacob do? What was he known for? And that will tell you the type of spiritual influence that affects this month. The tribe for this month is Judah. So if you if you do research throughout the entire scriptures of <coughs> anyone from the tribe of Judah and what they did and what type of person they were, what attributes that they had, is all those attributes and influences and character traits go with the month of Nisan. 
look at David for me, it's on right because David was from the tribe of Judah, right? Mm -hmm. David, David the Jew. What was David? Warrior. A warrior. He was a warrior and so a worshiper. What, what should we be doing in the month of Nisan? Warfare. Warfare. Yep. And worship. Yep. And worship. Because worship is warfare. Okay? This is the month that kings go to war. Okay. Is from the tribe of Judah. Right. So this is the the month that that's the reason why we do these twelve days. Because mm -hmm. you know we're hitting the ground running with warfare, and remember we want to control the future. When the future shows up, we just want to step into it. We already know what the future is going to bring. So these next 12 days affect every month of the year. So the seed that we're planting over these next 12 days are going to give us a harvest when that month <coughs> actually gets here. Okay? This is the head of the month, the king. This is the king of months. So this is the month the kings go to war. If you don't go to war this month, the enemy is going to go to war against you. He will be warring against you. And if you're not on guard or fighting back or already initiating an attack, you're probably going to fall victim to his attack. When David uh, lusted after Bathsheba, it was during this month. Remember it says he wasn't at the front with his men. He was back home. Instead of being in war, he was being warred on. Okay? And he lost that battle. Praise God he didn't lose the war. So either attack or be attacked. We are constantly in, we live in a battlefield. We're constantly at war with the army of darkness. And there is no bystanders in this war. You can't sit on the fence. What did Yeshua say? He does not, he who does not gather with me is against me or scattered. You have to be fully down for me or you or you fully forsake me. There's no in-betweens. No in-betweens. If you're not gathering, you're scattering. You, will, you cannot set this war out. You're either going to heaven or hell. You're either going to be victorious or defeated. You're either going to be blessed or cursed. No in-betweens. So we have blessed the new moon. We've got, we planted the seed to receive blessings for this month. Now we have another prayer that we like to say Every Rosh Kadesh. You hand me that right there. Do you have your copy? Is there another copy here? No, it's, no this is the names of God. Where's my. Yeah, there it is. Is there more than one copy here? Well, why don't I do a page, you do a page, and I do a page, you do a page. Okay. Can you sit by me? You want to bring your chair over here? Or you can't be seen on camera? You can make it to the blue show? Okay. 
and this is the month of Nissan. So each month, we just simply exchange the name out for that particular month. And this is our warfare prayer that we do every Rosh Kadesh. Because what you do on the first day of the month affects the entire month. Seek first the kingdom of Elohim. Thank you, Yahweh, for the gift of this new month of Nisan in Yeshua's name. We dedicate Nisan to your glory in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Adonai, for seeing us through the past month, especially this past month of Adonai. We thank you, Adonai, that you are mighty in the midst of our lives. You have caused us to enjoy your goodness, your provision, your grace, your mercy, your joy your Ruach HaKadosh, and your faith. Thank you, Yahweh, in Yeshua's name. Yahweh our Elohim, we are aware that in spite of all that the enemy tries to do, it is your counsel for our lives that prevail. Thank you, Yahweh, in Yeshua's name. To you be all the glory in Yeshua's name. Right now we say this prayer not only for ourselves, Lord, not only for myself and my family, for all the members of SIM, Lord. We say it in particular, Lord, for Crystal Hall and her son Lance Hall, Lord. We ask you to send your holy warning angels to Lance Hall and Crystal Hall, to their home and to the hospital right now in Yeshua's name, Lord. We remember them in prayer right now, Fathers. As we say this prayer to command the monk, we keep them in special memory, Lord. We keep the tetragrammaton in mind, Lord. yod Hey vav Hey, Lord. We keep the letters of the month, Lord. The Dalit for the planet Mars and the Hey for the constellation of Aries, Lord. We keep meditating on those holy letters, Lord. Right now, Father. Yahweh. We acknowledge all the sins and wicked things that we have committed that set up strange patterns in our lives this past month of Adar. And we repent of those things and ask you, Adonai, to forgive us and to break those patterns with the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. We receive special grace to please you and to live for you in Nisan, Lord, in Yeshua's name. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we command the gates of Nisan to lift up their heads and obey <coughs> us. Lift up your heads, O ye gates of Nisan, in the name of Yeshua. Surrender your treasures to us. Surrender your abundance to us in the name of Yeshua. Establish in our favor a daily pattern of safety and strength and success in the name of Yeshua. We command every stranger, strange thing, and unclean spirit trying to enter your gates to be crushed and be burned with Ruach Kokodesh fire in the name of Yeshua. We resist any command given to you to disfavor us in the name of of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, God. <laughs> Heavenly Father, let the tree of life yield her fruit for this month of Nisan bountifully unto us in Yeshua's name. Let Nisan be unto us and our household a month of joy and gladness in Yeshua's name. Abba Father, our Elohim, teach us to make the best use of our time in Nisan, in Yeshua's name. We shall bring forth daily new fruit in Yeshua's name. And we shall remain planted by the rivers of the waters of the Ruach HaKadosh in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Whatsoever we lay our hands to in the sun shall prosper yes, Lord. in Yeshua's name. Yes, Lord. And the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the creation shall work together for our good. And they shall reject and return any manipulations, projections, spells, incantations, hexes, vexes, prayers, or curses made against us in the name of Yeshua. Yes, Lord. In the sun. All of our needs will be met, and we will have abundance to bless others in Yeshua's name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Our Father Nisan, order our steps and lead us our right in your counsel in Yeshua's name. In Nisan, Lord, do a new thing in our lives every day in the name of Yeshua. Do new things in our home. Do new things in our children. Do new things in our church. Do new things in our job. And do new things in our business. Do new things in our clients. Give us new clients, Father. Do new things in our prayer life. Do new things in our quiet time. Do a new thing in our finances, Lord. Do new things in our body. And do new things <coughs> in our mind. Do new things in our spirit. And do new things in our anointing. In Yeshua's name. 
We declare now that by the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, we can do all things to Christ Yeshua, who strengthens us in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. By our Elohim, we will run through a troop and all of our enemies in these sons. We leap over every wall in the name of Yeshua. Thank you. The Lord will exalt our horn like the horn of the unicorn in Nisan, in Yeshua's name. In Nisan, we will arise to shine, for our light has come. And the glory of Adonai is risen upon us, in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Yahweh, our Elohim, in Nisan, light our candle and drive darkness away from us and our families, in the mighty name of Yeshua. Yahweh, our Elohim. Your word declares that Naphtali was satisfied with favor, and we ask that in Nisan, let us be satisfied with favor and abundance in the name of Yeshua. Surround us with favor as with a shield, favor with Elohim, favor with people, in the name of Yeshua. Yahweh our Elohim, in Nisan, shower us with favor like never before in Yeshua's name. Give us high favor in the eyes of those in positions to help us. In the name of Yeshua. Yes. Let us be acceptable to our brethren in the name of Yeshua. Even as Asher was acceptable to his brethren in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Yahweh our Elohim, make our feet like hinds feet in Yeshua's name. We decree and declare that we shall be unstoppable and untrappable in the month of Nisan Amen. in Yeshua's name. Give us great deliverance from enemy forces and from family enemies and generational curses in the name of Yeshua. Yahweh our Elohim, keep us upright to the end. Let all our ways please you. Let our goings out please you. Let our comings in please you in the month of Nisan, in the name of Yeshua. We curse every evil plan of the enemy against us and our families in Nisan, in the name of Yeshua. Let there be a miscarriage in the womb of the enemy, in their planning and in their plotting concerning us, in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And every evil planting of the enemy in our lives, in our spouse's lives, in our children's lives, yes, Lord. and the lives of the people that we do business with and do us good, Lord, let them be uprooted in the name, mighty name of Yeshua. Yes, yes, Lord. Every gate of defeat, right now, we command you to be crushed in Yeshua's name. Yes, Lord. Every gate of delay, we command you to be destroyed now in Yeshua's name. Yes, Lord. Every gate of hindrances, you shall not hinder us in these signs in the mighty name of Yeshua. Yes, Lord. And every gate of limitations, you shall not be able to operate against us in Yeshua's name. Yes, Lord. Every gate of non-breakthrough, we command you to be lifted up now that you may pass through to our breakthroughs in Yeshua's mighty name. Yes, Lord. And every evil planting of the enemy in our bodies, receive the fire, the Ruach HaKodesh, right now. In Yeshua's name. Yes, Lord. Every device Thank of the wicked to take us to the hospital or to a sick bed of affliction or to the grave. In the name of Yeshua, we see the fire, the Ruach of HaKodesh, yes. right now in Yeshua's yes, name. Yes, Lord. Our Father Elohim, shatter the powerhouses of our enemies in the mighty name of Yeshua, by thunder and by fire right now in the name of Yeshua. All altars and thrones of our enemies be destroyed by thunder now in Yeshua's name. Yes. In all secret places of our enemies, our Father. Consume them by fire now in the name of Yeshua, whether they be hidden within us or without, <coughs> and replace them with your <coughs> lordship in Yeshua's mighty name. And in the mighty name of Yeshua, we send forth fire now to destroy all the machinery and all the gadgets of our enemies in the name of Yeshua. Let their mirrors, with their microphones and their monitoring equipment, their computers, their cables, their satellite dishes, and all of their devices catch fire now in <coughs> Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we send forth fire now to destroy all the wickedness of the enemy. You. Yahweh our Elohim, you declare, we declare, that as many that are gathered together for the sake of our downfall, that they shall fall Amen. instead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let those who plan wickedness and evil concerning us in Nisan, let them fall in the name of Yeshua. 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 Yahweh our Elohim, every prison holding back our breakthroughs, we command those prisons to be destroyed by fire now in the name of Yeshua. All the blessings that you have released for us in Nisan shall be ours in the name of Yeshua. None shall be stolen, none shall be plundered away, none shall be hindered, none shall be not tied in our hands in the name of Yeshua. All of our treasures 
that have been seized by the enemy must be released to us now in the month of Nisan in the name of Yeshua. We decree and declare that we retrieve them yes. by Holy Ghost, Ruach, Hokadesh, fire in the name of Yeshua. We are the ark carrying your presence, O oh God. Yes. Therefore, let all our enemies fall before us in open disgrace in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Those who have touched us with the hands of evil, let their feet, let their hands, let their heads be cut off in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Remember, Adonai, your word declares, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. We are your priests. We are your kings, Hallelujah. as you have said in your word. We are your prophets that you have made, and you have made us priests and kings. Therefore, anyone who touches us, let the fire of the Ruach Kodesh answer for us yes. in the name of Yeshua. Yes. Yahweh Elohim, your word also declares that thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. When my mentor used to tell that story, he said, in Africa, the prophet of God showed up and threw in the village and just said that and the next morning all the witch doctors were dead mm -hmm. just from that word wow. y'all shall not suffer we, to live. Live. we don't have to do nothing against them we just quote the name of God Lord in the case of Lance if there is any witch person practicing voodoo dark arts or cults against Lance Hall your word has said that such a person you will not suffer to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh Halloween. Your word also <laughs> declares. Now, okay, I'll read that one. From Nisan 4, we revoke all demonic judgments passed against us in the name of Yeshua. Those judgments that have established a pattern of failure, of lack, of defeat, of insufficiency, of prayerlessness, in the mighty name of Yeshua, we break those patterns right now with the power of the blood of our risen Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we reverse and we revoke and cancel every evil dream from the camp of the enemy designed against us in Nisan. In the name of Yeshua, we declare them canceled, null, and void. In the name of Yeshua. Our Father Elohim in Nisan recompense those who trouble us with tribulation. In Yeshua's name, trouble them and pay them back with trouble and affliction in Yeshua's mighty name. Our Father, Elohim, and Nisan, our breakthroughs shall not be snatched or stolen in the name of Yeshua. Yes, in Nisan, we shall not spend money on sickness or funerals or court or police cases in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. We decree in Nisan, we shall not mourn at all in Yeshua's name. We decree and declare that in Nisan, the sun, the moon, and the heavenly bodies, the earth, and all the elements shall work in our favor. And they shall serve us, they will fight for us, they will defend us, and they will protect us in Yeshua's name. In Nisan, we declare that none of our family members shall die. In Yeshua's name, we shall not die. We shall live to declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. In Yeshua's Hallelujah. name. Abba Father, our Elohim, in Nisan, order our steps. Lead us in the path of righteousness. In Yeshua's name. Abba Father, Elohim, in Nisan, let new altars of prayer and supplications and praises and worship be established in our lives. In Yeshua's name. Hear us, O you, Nisan, this month. Work for us in Yeshua's name. You will serve us with your plenty in Yeshua's name. And going out in Nisan, we are blessed. And coming in in Nisan, we are blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We decree and declare that in Nisan, we are more than a conqueror. We Yeshua HaMashiach, who loves us and who saved us and died for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We decree and declare that in Nisan, we are the victor yes. in Nisan. We are on top and not beneath. We decree and declare that in Nisan, uncommon faith shall come our way in the name of Yeshua. We decree and declare in Nisan, golden relationships shall be our portion in the name of Yeshua. We decree and declare that in Nisan, we will go forth with joy. We will come back with joy 
we decree and declare, and these are all those who have said no to us will begin to say yes to us in Yeshua's name. We decree and declare that in Nisan, all those who look down upon us will begin to look up to us in the name of Yeshua. We decree and declare in Nisan, joy is our portion in the mighty name of Yeshua. We decree and declare that in Nisan, our pastors and we as pastors shall be favored of the Lord. They will walk in power and in wisdom and in knowledge. And as you favor them and their families, you will favor us. We decree Adonai, decree Adonai, that as you lift up our pastors and mentors, you will lift us up. And as you bless them, you will bless us. As you anoint them, you will anoint us. As you protect them, you will protect us. As you favor them, you will favor us. In the name of Yeshua. We decree that in Nisan, we shall give and give and give of our time and of our money and of our resources in the name of Yeshua. We decree that in Nisan, we will be soul winners in the name of Yeshua. We decree that those who we bring to Yeshua in Nisan shall be firmly established. They shall not backslide. They shall not walk lukewarm in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. And we decree right now that as whoever we turn in Nisan, that they shall be our portion in Yeshua's name. We decree in Nisan, we shall stand out to be blessed, and we will stand out to be chosen in Yeshua's name. Amen? Amen. Amen. We decree in Nisan, strangers shall submit themselves unto us in Yeshua's name. Amen? Amen. And as we go forth, they will give us of their bread and of their wine and their treasures in yes, Yeshua's Lord. name. And as we come in, they shall give us of their bread, their treasures, and their wine, and their gold and their silver in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. So we decree right now, Nisan, every gathering and every conspiracy against us in our workplace shall scatter in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. We decree in Nisan, every gathering against us in our father's family, or in our mother's family, or in our father's hometown, or our mother's home, and our and generational our line, yes, shall Lord. not be able to stand in Yeshua's name. We command them to scatter in the name of Yeshua. <coughs> o God, arise on our behalf. Go forth, man of war. Do battle on our behalf in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Our Father Elohim, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in Nisan, we break the ungodly patterns in the name of Yeshua. Break, 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 break the ungodly break, patterns in break. the name of Yeshua. One last time together. Break, break the ungodly break. patterns yes, in the name of Yeshua. Break the ungodly patterns. Oh God, in the name of Yeshua, let us see you in a new way, and let us behold your glory and your goodness in a new way, in the name of Yeshua. Lord, in Nisan, touch our ears and hear your voice. Open our eyes and behold wondrous things out of your word, in Yeshua's name, and order our steps, in the name of Yeshua. Lord, in Nisan, open your word unto us, empower us, anoint us, lift us higher and higher in you, Lord, in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yahweh, Halloween. <laughs> in Nisan, we ask that all that we do brings you Hallelujah. pleasure yes. in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Abba, Father, lift not your presence from us in the name of Yeshua. We praise you and we thank you and we give you all the glory and we worship you and we know that you have heard us, Lord. We lift you up on high and we give you all the glory in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Abba. You are worthy to be praised. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We go forth this day knowing that according to your word, that what we have decreed, it will come to pass. For you have said so, that we shall decree a thing, and it shall come to pass. Thank you, Father, for giving us the utterance. And all that we have decreed be sealed by the blood of Yeshua in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Let them not be removed. Let them remain permanent and speak in our faith throughout this entire month of Nisan and for the rest of our lives. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Lord. In Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Let's uh, light the Lord. I always feel like we should do that first. Let the answer. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, 
We ask that your spirit move upon the face of this holy world, Lord. Don't, don't just sit, don't be a person. No, it says you should be a person. Right. So that's what I always thought we always should be first. That's what I always thought. I always thought we should do the stuff first. Oh. Why do you want to do it? Well, it wasn't that. You'll be the war first. Okay. So. Dear Heavenly Father, just as your spirit moved upon the face of the holy water at the beginning of time during the primeval prologue, Lord, let your Ruach Hokadesh move upon the face of this holy water. And by reason of our anointing ourselves or anything else with it, let it do for us what it did for the world, Lord. For you said you have founded the world upon the flood and established it upon the rivers and streams, Lord. Let us be permanently founded and well established in you, Lord, by reason of our anointing with this holy water. Let this holy mikra do for us what it did for Noah and his family, Lord. For your word says that eight souls were saved by water. And that same holy water that saved Noah and his sons and their wives and delivered them to a new beginning in you, that same water destroyed all evil on earth. When we anoint ourselves with this holy water, Lord, through this holy nectar, let it save us and deliver us to a new beginning in you to let it destroy all evil around us, Lord, and in us, Father. Let this holy water, Father, do for us what it did for our forefathers when they left Egypt. The holy water, Lord, by reason of your outstretched arm, by reason of the outstretched arm of Father Moshe, the holy water made a way for them to go into their inheritance on dry land. But that same water that made a way for our fathers in the midst of the Red Sea destroyed Pharaoh and all his chariots and horsemen and foot soldiers that were pursuing them. So by reason of our anointing ourselves with this water, let this water make a way for us, Lord, to escape unto all of your promises, Lord. But let it destroy all evil pursuing us, Lord, and trying to hinder us, Lord. Let us see these horsemen no more, just as you said in your word, Lord. Whatever we are dealing with today, whatever is trying to hinder us today, Lord, let, it see, let us see it no more. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you. Lord, let this water do for us what it did for our forefathers at the edge of the river Jordan. Let it make a way for us to go into the promised land that you have promised us, Lord, a land flowing with milk and honey, circumstances flowing with milk and honey, <coughs> honey from the rock, Lord. Let it make a way for us to go over into them on dry land, Lord. Let it be a statement against the marine spirits, Father, that only you can slay, that only you can cause the sword to go again, come up again. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory, Lord. And Lord, as I said earlier, let this holy anointed oil burn with fire anything that is not of you, Lord. And Father, as we light your holy incense, Let this holy incense, Lord, do for us what it did for our forefathers in the desert. Lord. For your word says that Aaron took fire from the altar and placed it in his sense, <coughs> along with the holy incense. And he ran out into the midst of the congregation where the plague had already killed 
many of the Israelites. And he stood in the midst of them. And your word says that the plague was stated, that the plague could not pass, the spirit, the angel of death, could not pass through the midst of the holy incense place. He stood between the living and the dead, and the plague was stated, and could advance no further. <coughs> Lord, as this holy incense goes up before you, receive all of our prayers, praises, supplications, and requests, Lord. Let us be a sweet Savior, Savior, Savior to you, Lord. But let the angel of death, or any form of death, not be able to pass through this midst to us, Lord. Death in our finances, death in our jobs, death in our careers, death in marriages, death in relationships between parents and children, death in relationships between siblings, Lord. Death in business relationships. Let no form of death whatsoever be able to pass through the barrier created by this holy incense. Lord. Let your power be in it. Let no foe be able to withstand it. Lord. Let it bring life to every aspect of our lives. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, as we light your holy menorah, according to Revelations chapter 5, let your Let them burn brightly in us, Lord, as your seven spirits burn brightly before your throne. Let them burn brightly in our lives, Lord. Let the lighting of this menorah do the same thing that it did for Father Moshe, Lord. For when he looked into the burning bush, he was looking into your seven spirits before your throne, Lord, as he stood on holy ground, Lord. Let your power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing burn brightly in us, Lord, just as they did for Father Moshe. But most importantly, Lord, when he looked into the burning bush, when he looked into the, your holy menorah, you told him the reason why he was born, the reason for his existence, Lord. You gave him his purpose for life. Do that for us, Lord. Reveal to us the reason why we were born. Lord. Reveal to us the ministry that you have for us, Lord. Reveal to us all the blessings that you have laid out before us to simply walk into every day of our lives, Lord. Reveal it to us, Lord. And do for us what you did for Father Moshe, Lord. Not only reveal it to us, Lord, <coughs> but give us the power and the wisdom to accomplish it. And we thank you and give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
abide under the shadow of your protection. You take a bath today? You want to know? Your Messiah, bless you all. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I anoint your Messiah, bless you all. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I anoint your Messiah, bless you all. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I anoint your Messiah, bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I anoint your Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you come down in power upon the elements of the Holy Communion table to fill the unleavened bread with your body, the cup of the fruit of the vine, the cup of blessings with your blood, and the total essence thereof. And by virtue and reason of our partaking of this holy and divine meal, let it heal every cell, tissue, organ, bodily system, and structure within our bodies. Lord, your word says that your blood speaks, but it speaks a better thing than the blood of Abel. In Revelations chapter 1, your word says that your voice is as the sound of a mighty shofar. Therefore, Lord, let the shofar blast of the voice of your blood be heard throughout our entire triune being. Let it be heard from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Let it be heard in those areas of the brain, the amygdala, the exam, shalom, peace be still. Let it be heard in the frontal cortex, Lord, the right hemisphere and the left. Let it be heard, Lord, in the hippocampus, Father. Let it be heard in our hearts and lungs. Let it be heard in every blood vessel, vein, and artery in our body, Lord. As our, not only in our hearts and lungs, Lord, but in our kidneys in our livers, in our gallbladders, in our pancreas, Lord. Let it be heard. Let it be heard in the womb of every woman and in the loins of every man. Let it be heard in every joint of our body, Lord, right down into the marrow of our bones, Lord. We thank you and we give you praise, honor, and glory.
On that faithful night, no, the Heavenly Father, we ask for mercy and forgiveness of our sins. And the same mercy and forgiveness that we beg with you, we extend to our fellow brethren. We forgive those who you feel have harmed us with you. Remove all bitter roots from us, Lord. Pluck it out and cast it as far from us as the east is from the west. On that faithful night, the Lord took bread and he broke it. And after he had done so and such, he said, This is my blood, which is shed for the remission of your sins and the establishment of the new covenant. Take ye and eat and drink ye all of it. For my body is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And as we eat, as your word says, unless we eat your body and drink your blood, we have no life. We believe we are eating and drinking life into every aspect of our lives, finances, relationships, as well as our bodies. The body and blood of Yeshua HaMashiach make our family. Don't you need some? Okay, then you'll come off. You take one and give Brother Benny one. All right. Hold that for me. Double check the recording. Mm -hmm. That's still going. <laughs> okay, this is the the first night of our teaching. If you are Following along, uh, this is Nissan 1, the New Year's 5775 on April 20th, 2015. And tonight's title was, Who is God? I have found in the Messianic community that there is great confusion as to who God is. You know, when you walk into a Baptist church, Everyone who goes to a Baptist church or a Pentecostal church or Methodist or Lutheran or Presbyterian or Catholic, they all know or have the same idea of who God is, the Holy Trinity. But I found over the years that in Messianic churches, there's great confusion. There are some people who only believe in Yahweh. Then there's some who believe in Yahweh and Yeshua, and Jesus, as being God. And then still, there are others who believe in the Trinity, which is the correct method or doctrine. But 
they have all kinds of ideas about Yeshua. So I have done this teaching many times in many different ways, but during these next 12 days, I want to set down a foundation upon which we will build the entire doctrine of this ministry of uh, SIM. I really recommend that you guys go out and purchase this Bible, the Aramaic English New Testament by Daniel Gabriel Roth. He's a <coughs> fellow Jew and just an excellent scholar. And I, I highly make, recommend uh, his Bible. But let's turn to the book of Revelation. And it's kind of late. We got a late start. Rushing to get home after work. And I know everyone is tired after a hard day's work. So I want to hit the high point. This is extremely important. We got it. We have to get this proper foundation laid, so we don't want to really rush through it, but we want to get to it while everybody is still vertical. Revelation 1? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now I'm going to have to talk to my, my friend Roth about this. Uh, page 666. <laughs> I know that that's no coincidence. He's telling the devil who the Lord is, who God really is, and that's why. Don't let the blessing out. Well, it's, 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 it's good. It's going up to the heaven. The angels are up to heaven. Too. I'm not raising the blessing. You know that. <laughs> the incense, I, I don't. It does a false She thing. always wants to open up the window when we do incense. Absolutely. And I like to. Like keep it in the cloud, keep it in. It's not a cloud, it's smoke. It's, it's a cloud. It's not smoke. Okay, chapter one. The revelation of Yeshua the Mashiach, which Elohim gave to him to show to his servants the things that must shortly occur. And he signified it by sending through his messenger. To his servant Yochanan, or John, who bore witness to the word of Elohim and to the testimony of Yeshua the Mashiach, as to all that he saw. Blessed is he that reads, and they who hear the words of this prophecy, and keep the things that are written in it. For the time is near, from Yochanan to the seven assemblies which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was, and who is to come. From the seven spirits, which are before his throne, and from Yeshua the Mashiach, the witness, the faithful, the firstborn of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, who has loved us and released us from our sins by his blood, and has made us a kingdom of priests, to Elohim, the Father, to whom be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he comes with clouds, and all eyes will see him, and also they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn on account of him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, those first seven verses were the backdrop. The next verse or two will really just the next verse really says it all. Verse 8, I am Aleph, also Tom, says the Master Yahweh, Elohim, who is and was and is to come, the Omnipotent. That's verse 8. Amen. Okay? Now, if you're reading from King James, It'll say I'm Alpha and Omega, which you have been taught to interpret as 
I'm the beginning and the end. Which is true. But the Hebrew language is the most dynamic language uh, on earth. It wasn't created by all, all other languages were created by man himself. Hebrew was created, is it, are we still taping? Oh yeah. Hebrew was created by God himself. So it has dimensions that are unfathomable by us. It, the, the depth of its meaning is almost beyond, beyond us. It is beyond us, not almost to us. There are things, when you speak Hebrew, when you pray in Hebrew, you are praying prayers that you are not aware of. Just like when you pray in tongues, you're praying prayers that you're not aware of. But Hebrew is so, ah, it's so deep, it's so full, it's so rich. It has so many uh, different meanings. The shape of every letter is a meaning. Every letter has a numerical value, which gives it a meaning. It has a root word, which also gives a meaning. So all of these things are taking place when you speak Hebrew. Each letter, the shape of it. We need to close that. It's getting a little too cool. Each shape is projecting a, a certain meaning and message into the universe. The numerical value is projecting a meaning. The word itself has has meaning. All of these different things are going. There's so many things going on. Alpha and Omega is simply beginning and ending. That's it. There's nothing else there. In the Hebrew tradition, whenever you mention the beginning of something, immediately followed by the end of something. Everything, it, it automatically includes everything in the list. So when you mention the first letter of the alphabet, Aleph, and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Tom, it automatically means the entire alphabet. Aleph, Bay, Gimbal, Dalit, He, Vav, Zion, Het, Tet, Yod, Kal, Lamet, Mem, Nun, Samik, Ayin. He, Sade, Quo, Re, Shin, Ta. It automatically means all of that. So when Yeshua here says, I'm Allah, also Ta, he's saying that I am the Allah I'm Bet. I'm the Hebrew language. I'm the, I'm the, um, the Hebrew alphabet. Now that's interesting. You know, what, what does that, what do you mean you're the, the olive bed. Now that you now that he's made that statement, what does he mean? What's the purpose in making that statement? In rabbinical Judaism, there's a doctrine that states that the entire universe, both seen and unseen, was made by the Hebrew olive, olive bed, by the Hebrew language by the individual letters. In other words, the DNA of the physical and spiritual universe is the olive bay and the individual letters. So now that he's made that statement, remember, this is the book of, of Revelation. Revelation means to, uh, actually in Greek it was, you know, apocalypse, which doesn't mean death and destruction. It means to reveal, to uncover, to, de to define. So the whole purpose of the book of Revelation is to reveal 
Yeshua is to let us know once and for all all of his aspects, his character, his nature, who he is, his essence even. So here in verse 8, it takes place. I am Aleph, also Tav. I'm the Aleph Bet. And according to the Jews, that makes him the creator of the universe, both seen and unseen. Because the Jews believe that it is the Aleph Bet that created the universe. So I would agree with them then. Okay? I am Aleph also taught, says the Master Yahweh, <coughs> Elohim, God. Everyone knows Yahweh as the Creator. Mm -hmm. I mean, as God. So Yeshua says, I am Him. I'm not one with Him. You know, we not just, we just don't hang out and think the same, I am him. I am the master Yahweh, Elohim, God. I am the master Yahweh, God. Right there in verse 8. I'm the creator, I'm the creator of everything, both seen and unseen. I'm the master Yahweh. I'm he who is and who was and is to come. There's nobody but Yeshua, nobody but Jesus. The second coming. So he reverts back to form when he says, I'm he who is and was and I'm I'm the creator of the I'm the creator of everything. I'm Yahweh, God, and I was, I is, and I'm coming again. Jesus. Or Yeshua. He's constantly letting, you know, it's it's algebra. If A equals B and B equals C, then C equals A. That's what he's doing here in verse 8. We're all running the same. A, B, and C are one and the same. Okay? Elohim, who is and was and is to come. The omnipotent. He's saying, I'm Yeshua, I'm Jesus, and I'm omnipotent. Now, there cannot be two omnipotent beings in existence. Okay? If I somehow became omnipotent, Brother Benny could not be omnipotent at the same time. Omnipotent means all powerful. If Brother Benny is omnipotent, then I can't be omnipotent also because I can't have some of my power has to be invested in him and some of his power has to be vested in me by the very definition of the word omnipotent, all powerful. You cannot have two different beings that are omnipotent. There can only be one, like that old TV show. There can be only one. Duncan McLeod or the Clan McLeod. You, know? <laughs> you got to get down to one. So, in verse 8, by virtue of the statement that I'm the creator, I'm also Tom, says the Master Yahweh, Saying Yeshua, I'm Alec and Todd, and I'm also he who which he who was alive and was dead and now alive forevermore. And, and you know, I was, I is, I am, and I'm coming again, and I'm also omnipotent. If A equals B and B equals C, the C has to equal A. Okay. So in other words, the Trinity is the true doctrine according to Scripture. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, three, mani three manifestations. It's like if we have, take water, water has a, the chemical formula, H2O. If you freeze it, 
we call it ice. What's the chemical form? H2O. It's still water. If we boil it and convert it to steam or vapor, it's still H2O. It doesn't change. It's still water. Liquid, we drink it, H2O. We freeze it, ice, H2O. We boil it, steam, vapor, H2O. Okay. It's just a different form. Just a different form or a different manifestation. Mm -hmm. In physics, when you study the atom, there's a part of physics called particle physics, where the atom is considered a individual distinct particle. Electrons, neutrons, and so on. And by doing this, physicists and chemists and other uh, scientists can predict the behavior of matter by viewing the atom as a particle with individual particles. They, create, they can create solutions, all types of materials. But there comes a point when particle physics runs out where it, it, it no longer is able to predict how matter will behave. But it will, you can use what's called wave mechanics. You treat the atom as if it is a, a wave, like a sound wave. And by doing that, they can predict the behavior of matter and continue to create different compounds, solutions, and other materials. But even that has its limits. And when that happens, they go to what's called quantum physics, where the atom or atoms are considered packets of energy rather than a particle or a wave. So we have three ways of looking at matter. Particle physics, wave mechanics, and quantum physics. Same atom, but sometimes you just can't explain what's going on unless you change your way of thinking. Today it's a particle, tomorrow it'll be a wave, and Friday at the end of the week it'll be energy. Same atom. But you have to look at it three different ways. So that's how I explain the, the trend. One God, three manifestations, three different ways to look at it. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. I think you can see that by, I should have made this statement, the New Testament was originally written in Aramaic and Hebrew, not Greek. By translating it into Greek, it loses quite a bit of its meaning. And then translating it from Greek to English loses even more. But translating it directly from Hebrew, or keeping it in Hebrew, it retains much, much more of its integrity. Colossians chapter 1, verse... 14, page 600, page 600, Colossians, page 600, Colossians chapter 1, 
verse 14. Okay. Here, let's go to the sink. Okay. It's not the one you want. Yeah, yes, it is. Uh -huh. Let's see. Maybe I just need to start it higher. Um, let's start in verse 10. That you may walk as is right and may please Elohim with all good works and may yield fruits and grow in the knowledge of Elohim and may be strengthened with all strength according to the greatness of his glory in all patience and long suffering, and may set apart believers in life. Amen. Amen. With joy. Verse 11. And may with joy give thanks to Elohim okay. the Father I mean, and the Passover. <laughs> we're only laughing. I'm mixing lines. Okay. Verse 12, and may with joy give thanks to Elohim, the Father, who has fitted us for a portion of the inheritance of, <clears throat> of the set-apart believers in life, and has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transformed us to Trans the kingdom. And transferred us. And transferred us to the kingdom mm -hmm. of his beloved Son. Mm -hmm. Okay, talking about Yeshua, Jesus by whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins, who is the likeness of the invisible Elohim and the firstborn of all creatures. Now, in Revelation chapter 1, they just say um, Yeshua was first. Yeah. What verse was that? Go back to triple six. The first. What does it say? First, okay, verse, I'm looking at it. Verse, verse 5. And from Yeshua the Mashiach, the witness, the faithful, the firstborn of the dead. Okay? okay. Verse 5. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And here we see here um, in verse 15, who is the likeness of the invisible Elohim and the firstborn of all creatures. Okay? So... We, you know, we're talking about, I just gave that comparison. We're talking about Yeshua. Okay. Colossians chapter 1, verses 14, 15, uh, and before, we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about Yeshua. Okay. No ambiguity there, nothing in question. Okay. Now, verse 16. And by him, by who? Yeshua, and by him was created everything that is in heaven and on earth. Amen. Okay? Amen. Everything. Everybody got that? Okay. <laughs> Yeshua created everything that is on heaven and earth. Okay? And by him was created everything that is in heaven and on earth. All that is visible and all that is invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Now, that's the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. Everything was through him and was created by him. Now, some chapters would say everything was created through him and created by him. Some um, translations will say everything consists of him. I kind of like those that translate everything because when it says everything was through him, it means everything was created out of him. Out of who he is, everything was created. Let's look at that again because that's, that's uh, some key doctrines being laid down. And by him was everything that is in heaven and on earth all that is visible and all that is invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, everything was through him and was created by him. Everything came out 
of Yeshua. Everything consists of him. He is everything. Okay. Now that coincides the rabbinical belief that everything was created by the Yahweh faith. Okay, the rabbinical belief is that everything was created by the Yahweh faith. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, Yeshua says, I'm the Yahweh of faith. I'm the Yahweh of time. Right. So, if everything was created through Yeshua or out of him or consists of him, what is it that came out of him? Revelation chapter 1, verse 8 tells us the Isle of Bay, just as the rabbinical Judaism believes that the basic building blocks or the basic DNA of the universe or of creation is the Isle of Bay, which is the, in other words, that's the essence of Yeshua. Christians, all Christians know Yeshua as the Word of God. All of this just parallels, wraps itself up with, you know, with each other. All Christians know Yeshua as the Word of God. Then we see Yeshua saying, I'm the out of time. Doesn't that make sense? If, if he's the Word of God, then he has to be each individual letter. Okay? <clears throat> and if everything was created out of him, and as rabbinical Judaism teaches, everything was created by the Olive Bait, then whether they realize it or not, they're talking about Yeshua. I'm, you know, I, I know I'm kind of repeating myself going around. Just, you know, if A equal B and B equal C, then C equal A. I feel like you're just trying to convince those people who have a hard time understanding uh, or even accepting that because, I don't, you know, some people in the, in the faith, I don't know what faith <coughs> it is, but they are saying, you know, they want to reject Yeshua in the New Testament. So the people who are really look heavy into the Old Testament and don't want to acknowledge What's written in the New Testament? Well, some people just don't want to believe in the Trinity. And no matter what you show them in Scripture, they're going to keep. Well, what about, why, you know, why was he praying to himself in the garden? Uh, if he was dead, who raised him up? Um, they take what is unclear and vague and jump on it. And the definitive clear statements they reject it. They give more weight to what's vague and less weight to what's clear. They, you know, they, they reverse the process. What's clear and definitive should interpret the vaguer, uh, more uh, ambiguous scripture. But they do it the opposite. They, they take what's ambiguous and interpret what's definitive and clear. Now, let's go to John. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 1. Right after the <laughs> Yochanan. Yochanan. Chapter 1. Yeah. Now, this one will really drive you nuts. In the beginning. In the beginning. Who does the Bible say is the beginning? Jesus. Jesus. Yeshua. Yeshua. Okay. Beginning. Now we tend to re read in the beginning as what? Bereshit. Huh? You mean Bereshit? You mean Bereshit? No. Genesis. How do we read that in the beginning? In first. What? The universe. 
Okay, you've heard me say it a hundred times. In the Western mindset, in the beginning, it's simply once upon a time, oh. like a fairy tale. Amen. That's how we. That's how we read in the beginning. Oh, what it is really saying is in the beginning or in Yeshua was the Milsa or the word. Inside that, that translated better in English is inside of Yeshua HaMashiach was the Olive Bait or the word. And that olive bait was with Elohim, or that word was with Elohim. And Elohim was the olive bait. This, this, meaning the olive bait, or the word, was with Elohim inside of Yeshua. Now that last statement was that this olive bay was with Elohim inside of Yeshua. Everything existed through his hands or came out of him. And without him, not even one thing existed of the things which have existed. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. And that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. Now, basically, we're just going through the first three verses. <coughs> in the beginning, inside of Jesus, was the olive bay for the word, and that word was with Elohim, and Elohim was that olive bay. I don't know what's clearer. I, you know, I I don't know if you can say it any clearer than that. Jehovah Witnesses try to play games with Greek when they come see people. <coughs> saying that that's not the direct <laughs> article or, um, you know, not a definite article. They translate that as, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was a type of God, not, which is an indefinite article, instead of, and the Word was God, you know, <coughs> a definite article. So they play games with that, which gets blown out of the water because it was originally re written in Hebrew and Aramaic. So that, that game can't be played in, in Hebrew at all. It can't be played. Okay? Now, go down to verse 14. And the olive bait, or and the miltha, or word, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, meaning God's glory. What became flesh? Yeshua, and dwelt among us. It's clear here that Yeshua and God, Yeshua and Yahweh are one and the same. Absolutely clear. But that's, you know, that's not good enough that we have some people in the Messianic world who believe uh, in Yahweh and Yeshua but refuse to believe in the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I don't know, to me, you you're just trying to be hard here. You're just trying. Some people have such a problem with the Catholic Church that they just want to reject every doctrine that ever came out of the, out of the Catholic Church. 
And you just can't do that. I know there's been a lot of abuses, but they're just getting ridiculous. They're doing that with the Christian, Christian, Christianity faith. As soon as the Messianic hears, oh, you're a Christian. It's like, oh, that's a Christian doctrine. Everything Christian is supposed to be evil all of a sudden. Yeah. Everything, everything that the Christians have ever said or taught or any type of doctrines. And then they don't want it. They don't want us. They don't want it. You know, they say they don't trust the rabbis either. They don't trust the Catholic Church for their doctrine. They say they don't trust the rabbis for their doctrine either. Some of them, you know, as you heard me say a million times, you cannot go to a culture, take its belief system, and then tell, you know and adopt it as your own. And then turn around and tell that culture, oh, uh, you misinterpreted this. You misinterpreted that. Wait a minute. If they, they invented it, so to speak, they originated, I don't know what term you want to give them. <coughs> but if they are the, you know, it's written in their language, coming out of their culture, that you're trying to learn. You can't turn around and tell them that everything that they believe is wrong and, and needs to be reinterpreted. I guess that can work both ways too, whatever. But you're gonna you're gonna have to take their their word on some of it. You know, if you're talking about you don't believe, you don't trust them then why are you reading it in the first place? You know, there's an old saying, you know, figures don't lie, but liars do figure. Anytime you're dealing with a liar, you, you're working at a disadvantage. If you're trying to figure out a lie, whether it's true, if you're dealing with a liar, you need to stop dealing with them because mm -hmm. they're going to beat you one day, if not today, if they, or, or they, they already have. You know, you can't, I learned this in business, you can't watch a liar or a thief. You can't keep up with them. They're going to get you. They will get you. I have a question for you. Yeah. For the watchers, yeah, for some of the viewers and things. Um, because all of this, and some people don't seem to really connect understanding, why is it important to know who Yeshua is? Because some would say, well, you know, we just believe he's just a prophet or he's just, you know, he's not God, is what they're trying to say. They don't want to believe he's God. So why is it important to believe that Jesus is God? Okay, first of all, Yeshua says, no man cometh to Father except by him. <coughs> In other words, you can't get to heaven unless you come through him. Okay, that's one reason. Um, Jesus also said, Yeshua also said, if you say a word against me, you can be forgiven. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, if you blaspheme the Ruach HaKodesh, you cannot be forgiven. That's the unpardonable sin. If you don't know who God is, if you don't know that the Ruach HaKodesh is God, and that Yeshua and the Ruach and Yeshua and the Holy Spirit are one and the same, you might just blaspheme one of them and commit the unpardonable sin. The Bible also says if you don't believe in Yeshua, then you have the spirit of the Antichrist. So you need to know who God is. In all, you know, in all his manifestations. You need to have that clearly in your mind. Or you will make, you will make one of those, you will blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Or you will have the spirit of the Antichrist. I know it's complicated. It's the first thing, okay, so... All the Jews have the spirit of the Antichrist. 
Antichrist? <coughs> well, some will say yes. <coughs> but I just make the statements and you guys can go do with it what you want, want to do. You know. Yeshua said when they talk about the Antichrist, he says yes, and he was already, <coughs> already come. And he's already here, right? And he was walking mm -hmm. with his disciples. And his, yeah. he, his own people had already rejected him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. Okay, we just gotta put, put the final touches on this and it's nine and we're off. We'll wrap this up. Okay. You go to King James. Really, you, you really to see this, you need to go to um, the original language, actually. You know, the original language, like um, um, the Orthodox Jewish Bible? The Restoration <laughs> Scriptures. Oh, okay, the red one. Well, well hand me, hand me the, the, blue, the blue one. This one? Both of them. Let me see. Okay. So you really have to remember. Okay. Go to Bereshit or Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Better give everyone else the restoration scripture. Okay. Neither one of them. You almost, um, you really can't even read it in English to get the proper uh, translation or meaning of it. You need to, to look at it. Uh, take this, hand me the interlinear. The big one there. can't even read it in a transliteration. You, you need the original language to get all of the revelation. Remember in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, Yeshua said he's out of pod, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The first word is Bereshit. It is spelled, the first letter is the Hebrew letter Beit. It's the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Bereshit. It has the English sound of B. Okay? <coughs> it is called an inseparable, you know, in English we have, we have words like and, if, to, for, prepositions. Hebrew does not have prepositions like that. Prepositions in Hebrew are represented by one letter, and they are attached to the word. They're called inseparable prepositions. Bereshit, the, the Hebrew letter B, when it's at the beginning of a word, means in. In, to, <coughs> on, or whatever. So Rashid is actually the word beginning, Rashid. When you put the Hebrew letter Beit in front of it, it's Bereshit. The Jews believe that the Hebrew letter Beit 
is what created the universe. Okay, so we have bare sheep. What does bare sheep mean? In the beginning. What's the beginning? Yeshua. Yeshua. So the language gives us the clue right there. Inside of the beginning. The next word is Elohim. Excuse me. It's bear. Excuse me. Bear. bear uh, Bereshit. Bear. Bear means create. Bereshit. Bear. Elohim. In the beginning, created God. The next word after Elohim is Aleph Tav. It has no translation. It is intranslatable. The Jews do not even know what it means. They say it's a direct object marker. Some scholars say that. So you have you have a word there that's not even translated. You have bearer sheep, bearer. Elohim, Olive Tom. But what did Yeshua say in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8? He says, I'm Olive Tom. So now this takes on a new meaning. The, the language gives, the, the letters of the language give more revelation because what did John chapter 1 say? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim in the beginning or at the beginning. Where is all the time? No, right, right next to Elohim, he, just as just as John said, and the Word was with Elohim, out of top. Is right there with Elohim, right next, physically next to it. The next word is Hashemayim. Shemayim, the heavens. Hashemayim means the heaven. Whenever you see the Hebrew word, um, hey. At the beginning, it means the. Hashemai. So we have bear sheep in the beginning, bear created, Elohim, God, Alatav, no translation, Hashemai, the heavens, and then we have uh, and. We have Alatav again, connected to Alatav. And it's simply translated and. And the earth. Ha'aretz. Now look here. You will see this throughout scripture. Here's where The language gives us the hint and the clue. We have bare sheep in the beginning. Then we have Elohim, Alatah, we have Elohim, Alatah twice. Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost represented right there in that verse. You can't see it looking at English because it, it won't, the Alatah won't even translate. But inside of the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
the bait has with a dot in the center of it. That's called a begetch. The Jews believe that that dot represents the entire universe right there inside of one letter, which gives more credence to in the beginning. God created it inside of Jesus or Yeshua. That Degesh inside that bait, that little dot, Brother Benny, come here. So I, I, I want you to see this, the original language. You see, the, that's the bait. See that little dot right inside there? That represents the entire universe. In the beginning, bear a sheep. Bara, creator. Elohim, out of time. No translation. See any words up under? Okay. Ha Shemai, the heavens. And you see Alatal again? Mm -hmm. You see a letter before. Mm -hmm. That's a vowel. It means and. Mm -hmm. The Alatal is still not translated, just and. And Ha Rx, that's the earth. And it says, and the earth is the Vav again. And the earth was void and without form. So right there in, in the first line of scripture. You have three references there to the Trinity. Elohim and Alatah Christ. Just like you do in the Gospels. When Jesus said, I and the Holy Ghost are one and the same. So that's who God is. God is the Alatah, you know, God is Yeshua. Yeshua is the Isle of Time. And that's the, that's the basis that we are going to build on for the next 12 days that this ministry will teach on and build on. And we will constantly refer to this teaching for everything else that we do. The Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Who is Yeshua? He's the olive bait. What did, what's significant about that? Well, the olive bait created the world, according to rabbinical teaching. According to Colossians 1.16, everything came out of Yeshua. Everything consists of him. According to John, that word was in, in, inside of, of the beginning. The beginning is Jesus. What was inside? The Isle of Time. We get here to Genesis. We see the inseparable preposition, bait. We see a degesh in there, inside of that, that Hebrew letter, which represents the entire universe. Okay, we'll close with that until tomorrow. We'll start on time tomorrow. <laughs> Nobody, you know. Well, at least I don't have to run for work. Hello.